Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome back to Tech Point. Today our guest is Amar Prit, the CEO and founder of Humantic AI. Hello. Christian, it's nice to be on this uh, podcast with you today. Thanks for having me. Nice to meet you. Uh, please tell us what your company does. Christian, we are a buyer intelligence platform for sales teams. And uh, we help sales teams know their buyers, truly know their buyers before they walk into any meeting before they interact with someone before they send an email and uh, you know we our goal with that is to help them understand their prospects and sell in a way that their prospects want to be sold to uh, i saw that you are the the missing piece of the puzzle maybe you can explain us uh, all the four pieces of the puzzle <laughs> yes okay so what happens today uh, let's let's talk about that and then we'll talk come to the missing piece yeah. So today, when sales teams are typically selling to anyone, they're working with a bunch of data, a bunch of insights. Uh, the common thing is there will almost always be a account intelligence solution, something like a Zoom Info. Yeah, There are yeah. dozens of solutions, Zoom Info, Polo, Cognizant, Seamless, so many. Yeah. Largely, it is company data. Yes, you can get someone's phone number and email ID. That is true. But most of the information, technographics, intent, Everything is about the company. So you know the company, you know the account, now you have enough data. You can match your ICP and whatnot. Second piece, conversational intelligence. Often enough, you know, we see companies using Gong, you know, Wingman, Chorus. So if you think that is largely, we call that rep intelligence. So largely it's used by sales leaders to coach their reps. So now you have intelligence about rep sections while selling. Mm -hmm third piece which is a little less common but still common enough is something like a clari and that is deal intelligence clari predicts your pipeline where will you be at the end of this quarter so you now know about deals you know how the deals are progressing okay but now the question is anyone who's been in selling christian if you ask them what is sales all about sales is all about people Sales is all about people buying from people and people buy from people that they trust. So the question becomes, what do you know about your buyers, the people mm. who will actually make the purchase? Yeah. And that's where, and you tell me what, what you think. Yeah, you, you know this. That's where all the leaders fumble and when we ask them that question, they go like, ah, well, Amar Preet, uh, LinkedIn, you know, that's all. LinkedIn is a starting point, knowing where you went to college or, you know, where you worked. That doesn't help us, you know, build trust the way trust gets built, you know, the way it gets to be built when people used to spend a lot of time in person, wine and dine. Um, I, I was meeting some customers, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and uh, we literally spent talking an hour talking about their family, you know, what their plans are, what they're doing. I mean, that's how you get to know people. Absolutely. So that is what we try to bring to the table. That's what we call the missing piece of the puzzle. We call it buyer intelligence. Uh, that's been missing. People have tried to make it work, but now we're making it very easy for teams to always have it with them. That's awesome. You explained it great. Thank you so much. What are our top three features? So the number one feature which uh, makes us special and unique is our personality AI engine. So okay. we are one of the very few companies that can predict people's personality and that personality leads to personalization. So now if I know what is your personality, what kind of a person you are, what appeals to you, what doesn't appeal to you, should I come into this podcast or into a deal, let us say if I was selling you something, should I focus on building relationship with you? Should I, you know, just be cracking jokes with you? Should I just be going on ROI? Should I be trying to guess if you are concerned and you have doubts? Or should I be, you know, sharing anecdotes? I mean, there are many things and people are yeah. different. That's the whole point. So personality AI, which tells you exactly what will work with someone, that's number one. Number two is that now that you personality AI, you can personalize anything. So we have recently launched a feature called One Click Personalization. People send a lot of emails, a lot of LinkedIn DMs, a lot of messages. People make a lot of calls. How can you send a personalized email? 
not just a usual email how can that email be different for every single individual that you sell to similarly when you make a call often enough we've you know seen reps all of us make calls in a way that we are used to so if i am someone who likes to talk right strongly and you know with um, you know certain kind of words i'll do that someone else might like to talk up you know softly gently slowly but shouldn't we be trying to talk in a way that appeals to our seller uh, our buyer sorry yeah so that's that personalization easy personalization you know across the sales funnel is is feature number 2 that our customers you know use and feature number 3 is when we talk about buyer intelligence so we integrate into all the systems that sales teams use crm engagement solution even marketing solutions and beyond personality we have almost a dozen plus attributes what is your seniority in an organization what is your influence in an organization what is your education level what's your seniority level what is your age what is your uh, experience how long you been at that company we can write all of that into a crm in an you know automated mm. manner so you don't need manually people sitting and doing that and now that data can be used for segmentation it can be used for you know running personalized cadences so these i would say would be the top three features uh, that we offer these are uh, impressive <laughs> i'm impressed uh, and you also have a chrome extension right we do so in terms of product we have a web application mm. that can be used for bulk analysis it can be used to analyze buying committees we have a chrome extension that works alongside almost every known platform linkedin sales navigator gmail outlook uh, salesforce hubspot uh, outreach sales you know you name it all of them so yeah. and then we have apis that can be used to integrate into custom applications and uh, uh, finally we have the enrichments that are you know built out uh, beyond the chrome extension like to write data into those systems so so those are the four components that our solution offers and what is your pricing very simple two parts one is just the number of users so user licenses second is the number of enrichments so those mm. two things come together based on some some people sell to only a few hundred leads a month because they don't have a very um, you know mass sales motion they do account based selling someone yeah. else might be selling to thousands you know they might be sending emails to thousands of people or making thousands of calls so number of sales people plus number of profiles that you enrich um, combination of both and please tell us some use cases of the product i already saw hiring uh, and revenue but uh, so our, tell us more about so, that yeah our core focus um, christian at this point is on revenue so we say buyer intelligence for revenue teams Uh, we do have a few customers using us for hiring but that's not where we have proven results as much that's not where we spend time mm-hmm. the revenue and sales is where we do that both bdr as well as ae orgs because both need personalization both need to know their buyers and the impact that we have on that side is it's it's tremendous you know if if i may use that word so i often tell people a story where we recently did a pilot uh, our results were six times better than what the goal was six times better so our well, customer thought that the instrumentation was broken they said no 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 we need to redo the <laughs> trial because how is this even possible and we we told them we said look it's because you know everyone is selling in such an impersonal manner no one opens an email right no one responds to a linkedin connection request any any leader everyone it's just crazy it's spammy out there so as soon as you do something that makes you stand out you start seeing those results so sales revenue is you know where, where we work today where we have proven results today and are you the first company to to innovate in this space to create this space the buyer intelligence not not really not really in fact um, you know there are three four companies they're not many three four companies we were one of the first to bring this technology to market in fact we 
We built the core platform long time ago as part of my earliest startup. This is my second AI startup, second SaaS startup. Mm -hmm. So, and then at some point we found ourselves using it for selling. And that's mm. where, you know, in two years ago, one and a half, two years ago, so we brought this as a product to the market. Uh, but uh, there are, you know, around four or five other companies that do it. Um, and I think it's still, still a new space for many. But on the enterprise side, I think it's not that new, new because disk-based selling is used by almost 70% of Fortune 500 you know, companies. It is that common. So, um, yeah. Mm, okay. And, but when, when uh, exactly did you start the company? So we started in April 2021. Uh, we've been doing some work, of course, like there's always a story before a story. So... Um, the original research actually that underlies our algorithm started happening in 2015, so a long time ago as part of my first startup. Okay. And then around 2019, we started experimenting. So uh, 2021, uh, practically, we, we got started. And how big is your team right now? So we're around uh, 15, 16 people right now across uh, U.S. and India primarily. And... Um, I think we're hiring a couple of people in LATAM and Mexico right now. Or maybe, maybe, uh, yeah, I think we're still still looking. So we are a hybrid, remote, largely remote, uh, hybrid team, and uh, with uh, customers mostly in U.S. and partially in Europe, and some people in U.S. and some people in India at this point. And have you raised any funds? We've raised a couple million dollars. We've raised uh, in angel funding. We've not raised any institutional funding, but we are... Uh, we are backed. Our angels are some of the most prominent, most well-known angels in the world. Um, you know, so some of them include uh, people who backed companies like Slack, companies like Miro, companies like Tesla. Uh, you know, our angels include at and CEO. Our angels include uh, people who are on the board of companies like Lockheed Martin and Asana and Coinbase and so on. So we're backed by some prominent angels. Oh, and do you have any piece of advice for the SaaS companies looking to, to do the same? I think advice is easy to give. Um, you know, we can always say a gazillion things. But like I said, uh, I have been doing this for a while. It's My startup journey is almost 10, 11 years long. So the first startup <clears throat> that I did did well for some time and not so well for a lot of time. So a lot of, lot of learnings come through. But ultimately, I think what we all got to keep in mind is uh, we need to solve a problem that people care about. And sometimes when we do new things like we do, you know, so we often say we are a latent problem. Latent problem means there is a problem, but you don't know there is a solution, so you never look for it. Mm, okay. I mean, I'll give you an example. A latent problem is, is traffic, right? We all hate traffic. Every city in the world has traffic. And maybe, not maybe, one day, you know, jetpacks and flying suits are going to be a solution to traffic. Yeah. But right now, because we don't even know it's possible, we don't even look at that as an option. So, so that's the way we have, for example, been. You know, no one could imagine that you could predict someone's behavior. You know, before I meet you, if I, how can I know how are you going to think and what words would be the right words for you? So people have worked with what was there. So, but now when you actually, it's possible. So, uh, you know, it takes people a minute. So going back to your earlier question. So sometimes we have to solve a real problem, but we also have to educate the market. And what we have seen is educating in a interesting manner is always better than educating in a boring manner. Like our product introduction video is a rap video. So we oh, like to do a lot of fun stuff. So, so that's important, you know. I would say always to uh, educate uh, the market, especially if you're a new kind of a product like us. And what what do you think was your biggest challenge since starting the company? <laughs> selling is always the biggest challenge, whether for us or our, for for our customers. Selling is always the biggest challenge. But in our case, like I said, um, in many ways, you know, it's like creating a new category. There's nothing called buyer intelligence out there, right? So for us, that's a <clears throat> huge channel challenge. 
to make people understand that there is a problem, that they have a gap, and what can they accomplish if they start plugging this gap? What will it lead to? Because we, we're not another CRM that is in a proven space, which is a known need. So that's, that's a special uh, challenge, uh, which I think we were doing a good job of addressing that at this point. Happy for you. What has been your best growth tactic for uh, gaining new customers? So for us, um, one thing that's worked effectively is, uh, you know, we've, we've tried to actively use social selling. So if you are on LinkedIn, you'll probably see us uh, quite a bit, and our customers also love the product. They talk about us often. Uh, we try to make sure that we are uh, we're making it easy for people to talk about those things. So we try to collaborate with people who have a voice, people who are seen as experts. And now, if it only work if the product works, but even if the product works, I, I think it's important. Um, I always think people buy something when they can triangulate something. What that means is, if you hear about a product from three independent sources, chances are you will consider it seriously. You might not buy it that day. So if you come and tell me, Amarpreet, here's a good product, I'll say okay. And then three days later, I hear it from you know, someone in my uh, neighborhood. And then I say, <laughs> whoa, hold on, is something going on here? And then two weeks later, I, I read about it you know, on some website and I'll be like, oh, crap, you know, we, need to, we need to consider this. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, so social uh, selling is uh, is amazing. <laughs> yeah. What's your vision for uh, for the future? Well, that's a big question. It's a, always a heavy uh, loaded question. Um, I think we we don't play very humble when it comes to that question. Our uh, <laughs> I think what our mission I like to call it rather than uh, than vision. Uh, you know, our mission we say is to humanize interactions, humanized selling. So that's where our name, Humantic AI, comes from. So AI, we believe that AI normally and by default, AI makes us more, you know, transactional. It puts distance between people, right? If you and I were sitting in a coffee shop having this conversation, it'll be a very different conversation than a Zoom conversation. So technology Absolutely. is actually putting distance between us today. Um, I, I, you know, I'm in Bangalore right now. I was in Bay Area a few weeks ago, but people are like, "Hey, we don't need to meet. You know, there's no need to meet because we are so comfortable. You know, with just a Zoom call, and that puts distance between us. We don't really get to connect. So we think that by and what is it about? It is all about knowing, you know, other people better. So if we can help people know and understand others, we will reduce that distance. We will humanize those interactions. If I come into this conversation knowing a little bit about you, we will have a better interaction than me just coming in and saying, okay, I'm talking to some podcaster on some podcast, right? You as a person, me as a person. So that is, that is what we focus on. That's what we obsess about. How can we humanize how people interact? And starting with selling because selling is very transactional. That's, uh, if we succeed, I think, uh, hopefully the internet will be a little bit more humanized. You know, people will be uh, making an effort or easily getting to know others a bit better before interacting. That That's what we hope to accomplish. That's a great mission. <laughs> Fantastic. I'd love to hear your backstory before uh, starting these, uh, these two startups. So how you started your career? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a long story. Uh, been around for a while, 20, 22 years now from a career perspective. So I'm a, you know, engineer turned product person, built technology products for around 10 years working in the industry. Uh, mostly built some, AI was not very big, but a little bit AI, you could say, but largely data and uh, large scale products. So then in 2010, I said, hold on, I've been working for 10 years. Uh, I had some thoughts about what kind of products should be built, you know, how things should work. Um, so I was a bit of a should guy, you know, so it was less of a there being an opportunity, more of a no, 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 this is unacceptable, you know. We got to do things in a better manner. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started with my first startup, uh, you know, so that was, I started around 2011, but the startup came together around 2014. 
So I spent around seven, eight years working on that one. Oh. And like I said, had some great time, had some not so great time. <coughs> and then that led to Humantic AI in 2021. Uh, you know, so this, uh, this uh, took off. And so far it's been a pretty good run. A lot of learning that uh, we are able to put to use. I'm personally able to put to use. But yeah, uh, that's how the journey started. It was always about building something so that the world works in a certain manner. And uh, hopefully, hopefully we will manage to accomplish that. And do you have any piece of advice for uh, founders? Uh, like I said, I, I, I hate giving advice. You know, that advice is easy to give. But... Uh, um, Or maybe for, think, for people starting from uh, developers to, to founders, like you did. Uh, yeah, so I think uh, it's nothing. Uh, sometimes we need to just get back to the basics. Um, you know, the most important thing, I think, anywhere is uh, you should know what you want, right? You want easy life. You want balance. You want money. You want success. You want to change the world. You should know. And then not give up on it. Yeah. So it's easier said than done. But uh, uh, know what you want. Also know what it takes. You know what every depending upon how big your goal is, it is going to require an equally big sacrifice. So I, I keep telling my team that I keep meeting people. They want a lot in life. They want a lot of success, but they're not prepared to put in the sacrifice that that success requires. So that's important to know. Otherwise, it leads to, and again, slightly philosophical thing there, but I think it applies to <laughs> founders, developers, everyone equally. Know what you want. Know how much of a sacrifice it will take. And once you make your mind up, just, just stay at it. It will not come easy. And uh, you just got to stay at it. Uh, sooner or later, it, it comes your way. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for sharing this. It was great. I have one last question. What's your favorite software apart from Humantic AI? What's my favorite software? Uh, <laughs> if you'd asked me uh, what is my favorite product, I, I had an easy answer. So, Tell um, us the product and maybe afterwards uh, the software. <laughs> okay, so th this is going to sound weird, but uh, I've always thought that really, you know, the, the best product out there, non-tech this is, is water. Water is the best product. It's the most versatile product You're thirsty, you drink it, your hands are dirty, you clean it, uh, you name it, you know, something, you know, you got hurt, you can, you know, you fix it. Uh, it is the most versatile uh, product. And we so, don't see the value of it yet. Yes, and it's the simplest of products, isn't it? I mean, what is simpler yeah. than water, you know, so it is, but there's nothing as powerful as it, you know, it can, uh, it can change the world, it can change destinies. So I've always thought, yes. So we were very platform kind of an approach to building what we're building. And I think uh, in, a, in a very meta sort of a manner, that, that is the thought process. Can you build something that has that kind of applicability for a range of use cases? Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. Okay. Uh, is there anything else that you want to, uh, want to tell us today on the podcast? No, I think um, you, you asked some pretty good questions today. Um, you know, I've, I've covered about us, uh, about our customers, about, you know, uh, some of my thought process in general. So I think we've covered some good ground. But the only only thing um, that I would say at the end is, uh, you know, in terms of especially, especially true uh, today, what we spoke about the whole humanization thing, I think all of us um, need to be a little bit more empathetic, you know, a little bit... Uh, little bit less transactional. You know, it's all salespeople too, right? I mean, it's not always about selling. It's okay to sometimes just do a good thing for someone. You know, every email that you send doesn't have to be a follow-up for a deal closure. It's okay sometimes to share something useful without really expecting anything. So I think that that uh, that makes it better for everyone, you know. Uh, so that's the only thing I'll say because I don't see it happening often. So uh, that's the last piece from my side. <laughs> thank you so much I'm super grateful you, you, you did great thank you for sharing the value absolutely Christian thank you once again for having me on today <laughs>